ओम नमः शिवाय नमस्ते वेल लाइफ इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दीज डेज थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग चेंजेस आर कमिंग सो फैस्ट and the tempo is only increasing it's accelerating more and more actually if i look back on my life this lifetime has been like five lifetimes in terms of the content and the realizations that i have had in this one lifetime I started out born in a Christian family. I married a Native American woman and got trained up in the Native American sacrifices and stuff like that. Then I met my guru, Prabhupada, my uh, Diksha guru, Adi guru, and he brought me to India and I became a Vaishnava and I was identified as a Vaishnava for the next 30 years or so and then i had this marvelous enlightenment experience in 1984 where shakti came to me and gave me shakti pot boom it put me on another whole path and i wound up going to uh sri lanka becoming a buddhist monk and studying buddhist teachings the original manuscripts not modern so called buddhism which is a crock <laughs> but the buddha's original teaching which is actually pretty good when it's taken in the context of the vedas if it's taken independently then it loses all meaning so anyway i learned how to meditate to put it mildly i was living in a cottage up in the mountains in sri lanka and meditating 8 10 12 hours a day every day day in day out for 5 years so i learned a little bit about meditation <laughs> then i came back to india wandered around and wound up in tiruvannamalai where i studied advaita and became a shakta worshipper of the goddess and took sanyas from a shakta guru and now 5 years later i find myself in north india and i'm becoming a devotee of shiva but that's only what's going on on the outside internally i'm going through so many changes like i said i feel like i've lived 5 lifetimes because i've gone through so much knowledge and so many different spiritual processes each of them to their completion i mean all you have to do is look at this channel download the dharma sar video guide linked in the description and you'll see such a broad range of topics how did i learn all this stuff how did i practice so all this stuff so quickly and in only one lifetime i don't know i just consider it a great blessing it may have something to do with having jupiter in the ninth house with ketu in scorpio and mars exalted in capricorn and even though my mars is opposed to retrograde jupiter and pluto in cancer what saturn did was make sure that nothing i did lasted none of my relationships none of my partnerships none of my memberships in any society none of the paths or philosophies or a different ways of knowledge that i studied none of them gave lasting satisfaction i always had to move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and now those changes are happening faster and faster one result is that now i have a tremendously broad view of the entire field of spiritual life and i can understand how everything relates to everything else as you have seen if you follow this channel for any length of time 
we have a system that shows where everything fits in and how it relates to everything else in terms of consciousness. So I feel like what's happening is I'm accelerating more and more and at some point I'm going to reach escape velocity. You know, when you put a satellite into orbit, it remains trapped in the Earth's gravity well. If you want to go to another planet like Mars or even the Moon, you have to reach a velocity high enough to escape the gravity well and actually go into orbit around the Sun. And that's called escape velocity. It's about 25,000 miles per second. So it's really, really fast. But I think something similar is happening with spiritual knowledge, where you learn more and more. And the more you learn, the more you become capable of learning, because you have a tremendous background, tremendous store of knowledge with which to assimilate and digest and understand and contextualize the new stuff you're learning. So it's like money. The more money you have, the easier it is to make money. Huh? But it's knowledge and, and spiritual knowledge at that. So in this way, I've been accelerating the pace of my transformation. And I think within a relatively short time, maybe just a few years, I will reach escape velocity. And that means final liberation. I'm already becoming very detached because I see that everything in the world, not only people and animals and plants, all life forms, fishes and so on, and the oceans and the lands where they live and the environmental conditions that they live in, the weather, the precipitation, water, you know, landslides, avalanches, things like that, floods, hurricanes, storms, and social conditions too for human beings. They change so rapidly and they go out of fashion so quickly that how can you say they even exist? Everything is subject to cessation. Everything, everything that we can name as a so-called separate object, <laughs> which is really an illusion. There are no separate objects. The universe is one complete whole, Purna. But anyway, all those objects, so-called objects within it, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So one should not become attached. One should not become affectionate towards or connected to any of them internally because they're simply going to go away. And when they go away, if we're attached to them, we'll suffer. So the whole point, the whole way of spiritual life is to become detached and not identify with any of these things thinking, oh, this is my body, this is my mind, this is my house, this is my car, this is my job, huh? or my business, or my wife, or relatives, or children, or anything. Because as soon as we say, this is mine, the question arises then, who am I? And if we look into that deeply, we find that this so-called I doesn't really exist. Because the whole idea of I-ness is that this is a separate thing, a separate individual. And like I said, the universe is actually one whole thing. There aren't any individual things. It's all one. You have to be familiar with Brahman to see this. You have to have reached that stage in meditation where you can see that 
The only thing that's permanent is that which has no qualities, no attributes, no actions, no identity, no ego, no self selfness, huh? but is completely without any qualities whatsoever. And that is Nirguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman is represented by Shiva. Saguna Brahman, which is everything that appears to exist <laughs> separately, is represented by Shakti, also known as Maya. Maya means that which does not really exist. So this universe, with all of its manifestations and its apparent variegatedness and, and different things and objects and beings and activities and stuff, does not really exist. And the proof of that is it comes into being at a certain time, exists for some time, and then disappears. Actually, it's destroyed by Shiva, Hara. Hara means the destroyer. Huh? Bom bom hara hara. Shambhu. <laughs> Bole. Bole means one who gives compassion. So Shiva is compassionate. He is very easy to contact, but very difficult to reach. He's very easy to please, and then he gives benedictions. But it's very difficult to ask him for a benediction that doesn't always turn on itself and become a curse. Because if we ask Shiva for anything material, that's going to be vanquished. And like I said, that, that creates suffering if we're attached to it. Of course, if we ask Shiva for something, it means we're attached to it, right? We desire it. And that desire itself is the cause of ultimate suffering. Yeah, maybe we get a little pleasure out of it, but that's also temporary. So the real principle of the material existence is actually suffering. Because everything that we do, everything that we acquire, everything that we desire turns into suffering. So the key to it all is to get out. How do you get out? You curb your desires. In the beginning, this is done by following rules and regulations. But as bhakti develops and matures and turns into meditation, then detachment and renunciation become spontaneous and natural, just like love of God becomes natural in the stage of mature bhakti. So finally, when meditation matures and gives its fruit, then the fruit, like when a ripe fruit is ready, it simply drops from the tree. No need to make any effort to pick it or prepare it. It's ready to eat, huh? a complete package. It just falls from the tree spontaneously. And the same is true with liberation. When meditation reaches the mature stage, that liberation spontaneously arises in our hearts. And we see, aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And Brahman is everything. So, Shiva, um, I am Shiva, I am Brahman, I am Vishnu, I am Shakti, I am all. So in that stage, how can one harm anyone or anything or any being at all? It's not possible. Indeed, one wishes to act only for the benefit of all beings. And that's why we make these videos. <laughs> Not that we have to, not that we need to, not that we are attached to being a guru. If you look at my bio, first thing it says, I'm not a guru. I'm not a guru. <laughs> you want a guru? Go someplace else. Huh? What am I? I am what I am. Whatever it is. <laughs> so you figure that out for yourself. You read the scriptures, you do the yogas, you do bhakti, you do meditation, you experience all these things for yourself, 
and eventually you will come to the same conclusion, which is the perfection of enlightenment and the end of the path. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namo Shivaya.